Hey guys, it's Kayla here from Journey Dog Training coming back with a third update on my foster dog Madge. So if you guys have missed part one and part two about Madge, make sure you just scroll back a little bit in my feed and find those videos. So Madge, as you can see, is in some new digs. So today is Friday, April 10th, which means I have had Madge for about 10 days. Um, yeah, 10 days. So Let's see, I'm gonna give you guys an update. So last time you guys saw her, she was in a circular X-Pen um, over here in my apartment um, and she still had a crate. So we have removed the top of her crate and then ultimately actually removed her crate entirely. Um, you guys can see it uh, right over here, um, but it is closed so she actually can't get into it. Um, and we did that because she was so nervous about taking steps outside of the crate um, that we felt like keeping the crate in there was actually giving her a space that felt so safe that it was hard to progress outside of it. Um, so we're pushing her a little bit by removing the crate, um, but I felt like that was necessary in order to make some progress. Um, so that was over there in her old um, space. We also started conditioning her to a clicker. So um, I will drop in a video here um, showing me clicker training her. So what you guys are gonna see is I'm offering my hand out with just kind of two fingers out like this. That's the signal I use for a hand target. I just offer it out when she extends to sniff. I click and then give her a little bit of cat food on a spoon. Some things that you guys are gonna notice. Um, I'm taking very, very small steps here with her. Um, she's just extending out. Um, and if I just feel her whiskers, I'm clicking for that. I'm also keeping my side to her and I'm looking at her, but I'm trying, you guys, it's hard to tell, but I'm not looking her in the eye and I'm trying not to stare at her as much as possible. I'm also moving slowly and deliberately. So more or less, all you guys should be seeing is me offering my hand, her touching it, me removing my hand, me taking my other hand, giving her food, removing it and then repeating. I'm not gonna, I don't talk at all in this video, but you guys can watch that here. Let me know if you guys have any questions. So that's clicker training and target training. Um, from there, some of the other things we've done. I introduced her to Barley, so I let Barley into her space. 
um, they hung out a little bit. She started actually play bowing and spinning in circles and licking at his face. I unfortunately did not get video of that, but just trust me, it happened. It was very cute. Um, then yesterday, Thursday the 9th, so when I had had her for nine days, I let both of them out into the apartment together um, and she was actually doing really, really great. I'll drop in a video here of her um, exploring the apartment and interacting with my boyfriend, Jason. She did eat from his hand a little bit, so you guys can watch that now. So that went really well and I was really excited about that. Unfortunately, I then had a podcast interview for my job and I was trying to corral her back into her exercise pen and I ended up looping a leash around her to move her back into the exercise pen and that really freaked her out. So it was kind of the, one of those weeks where we took two steps forward and one step back. I'm really bummed that I did that and I feel like I pushed her too hard, but I wanted to be honest with you guys about the fact that that happened because if you guys are dealing with a dog who's as nervous as Madge, I just want you guys to know that it's common to have setbacks like that and I don't want you be to beat yourself up about it too much. Just know that those sorts of setbacks happen. Um, hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes and just remember that if you let the dog out, you need a game plan for how to get her back. Um, so that was really great. She's definitely really excited to spend time with Barley. Um, and then last night we decided that it was time to move her into my living, my kitchen area. Um, part of that was because those floors are much easier to clean if she has accidents. She's still not going outside to potty train. We still haven't even pet her or touched her yet. Um, also, once she got the experience of getting out and having more space and interacting with Barley, she actually was escaping from this X-Pen when it was set up in the old configuration. Um, and I figured I'd just give her more space and then allow Barley to come in and out with her much more frequently. So that's been a big change for her. And as you guys might be able to see over my shoulder here, um, she has not yet eaten her breakfast. So she is pretty upset by this new change. Um, so that's a bummer. But again, that's just kind of the reality that we're living with here. Um, you know, it's one of these things where a lot of times us professional dog trainers will th say things like, we can't put the dogs over threshold. We don't want to be flooding the dogs. We don't want to do anything that freaks them out. And that's absolutely my goal here. But the reality is me existing in the same space as her freaks her out. Um, and she's going to need to get used to it in order to be adopted out. So I'm still ignoring her every time we move through the kitchen or to go to the bathroom. We're just ignoring her dropping food um, if we can. Um, but as I said, she's currently not eating. She's been in here for about 13, 14 hours. Um, so last night and then through now to the morning. And we'll see. Um, I am hoping that she starts eating soon so that we can get her meds into her. As you guys might remember, she's on several different behavioral meds to help reduce her stress levels. And we'll see where it goes. So my plan is now that she's in this new place, we're kind of taking a couple steps backwards here. I want to get her eating again. And then we'll restart the clicker training as much as we can. What I'm really excited about in this new space is we can also practice some follow me sort of behaviors and, and um, getting her to take steps towards us to, during that target training. I then want to start moving towards actually handling her with the goal of getting a leash on her um, and petting her a little bit. That might take a little while, but those are kind of some of the things that are next on my radar once I get her back up to where she was yesterday um, with this new setup. So some things that you guys can take home and learn from this with your own fearful dogs. Um, changes in setup might be really, really hard for them and expect a backslide. If you let them out and give them extra space, remember that you need to know how to get them back into that smaller space. And one of the biggest things that was just really awesome for me to see here was how much better Madge was with Barley around. Um, so if you've got a really fearful dog and you suspect that they might have a history where they spent quite a bit of time around other dogs, or even if you don't, 
it's probably worth it to introduce them to another really savvy, calm, polite dog and see if that helps them out. Um, because it did really help for Madge. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope the clicker training video um, in this is really helpful. And I hope you guys can learn from some of my mistakes as far as this two steps forward, one step back sort of thing. Um, but yesterday was a really, really exciting day other than a couple setbacks. And then I knew that moving her into this new place was going to be a big um, change for her that was going to be really stressful. So I'm not all that bummed that she's struggling here because I expected it. And would it have been better to move a little bit more slowly with her and keep her in a smaller space for longer? Potentially. But again, in the long run, we really need to try to get her um, making some progress here. And it looks like she's eating over my shoulder. So that's good. Um, so, you know, I'm doing what I can to try to walk that line between pushing her and keeping her as comfortable as possible. And she did just finally eat her breakfast. It's about noon, that breakfast. Um, I've tried to feed her twice, once at nine and once at 10 a.m. Um, by hand, she was not eating. So at 11 o'clock, I just put it down on the floor and let her eat it. Awesome that not only is she eating it, but she's choosing to eat it while I'm close here instead of while, she, while I'm over on the couch or at my desk. So you guys, Kayla Fratt from Journey Dog Training. I'm a certified dog behavior consultant. You guys can find me online at journeydogtraining.com. Like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. You guys know the, the deal. Um, if you wanna follow Madge and kind of daily updates, I put them in my Instagram story. You can also follow my dog Barley and our outdoor adventures here in Montana at Collie Without Borders. So it's a little confusing. Most of the time I'm journey dog training and then on Instagram I'm Collie Without Borders. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye.